the fundamental flaw in our federal system. The hues and cries for restructuring in our nation appeared not to have been well received by this present government. The inquisitive may ask, why must we restructure? I will give you a simple answer. We must restructure to correct the flaws in our federal system. A federated state is defined as a territorial and constitutional community forming part of a federal union. In a true federal system, previously sovereign states agreed to confer their individual sovereignties on a central government. In other words, the states create the federal government, as was the case with the original 13 American colonies. In Nigeria, the federal government creates the states. This was also the case when the Nigerian federal system was originally conceived by our founding fathers. Prior to the coming of the colonialists, sovereignty was domiciled in empires, kingdoms, city-states, and republican villages. It was however taken over by the colonialists, at which point it resided in the British crown. At independence, as negotiations from the, for the framework of a new sovereign entity took place, sovereignty had taken another geopolitical form, that is regional. It was these regions, regional units, that had agreed to federate at the London Conference, which led to the Little Two Constitution of 1954, the year in which I was born. That was a social contract upon which the Nigerian state was formed, but the social contract was broken on May 24, 1966, through the unification decree by General JTU Agui Irosi. That was the day Nigeria died. Five decades later, in spite of the reversal of the unification decree by General Yakubu Gawan's administration, resulting in the division of Nigeria into 12 states, this deviation from the landmarks set by the fathers is a crucial reason for a disjointed nationhood and the perennial social economic decay. It is why efforts at economic diversification by government after government, including the present government, have failed to yield the expected results. It is what has led to the infrastructural decay. It is why we run bloated governments that either to spend se over 70% of annual budgets on recurrent expenditure. The imperatives of restructuring. To understand why we must restructure, let's take a quick look, for example, at the administration of education in Nigeria. At independence, the entire northern region which comprised the current 19 northern states, had one ministry of education headed by one minister. The entire western region, which comprised the current six states in the southwest, and roughly two states, Edo and Delta, in the south-south, had one ministry of education headed by one minister. The entire eastern region, which comprised roughly five states in the current southeast, and four states in the in the south south had one minister of education headed by one minister. Therefore, there were only three ministries of education headed by three ministers in the entire country, and they were responsible for the rapid educational advancement that took place in that era as the regions competed through such policies as free education to achieve socioeconomic development. Today, we have 36 ministries and 36 commissioners for education, which together with the Federal Ministry of Education consume a huge chunk of the limited education budget through recurrent expenditure. This is a very huge drain pipe in our economy it ranks Paris Pursue with the cancer of corruption in hampering our growth and development as a nation. 
Imagine how much you could save with six efficient and effective ministries in education and other relevant socioeconomic sectors in these geopolitical zones. Restructuring made easy. For those who still question the need for restructuring, I have for you a simple analogy that may cause you to have a rethink. For 16 years, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, was the governing party in Nigeria. For about 12 years, as individual parties, the so-called opposition parties tried unsuccessfully to wrest power from the PDP. In 2003, the Action Congress, AC, dominant in the Southwest, the All Nigeria People's Party, ANPP, dominant in parts of the North, and the All Progressive Grand Alliance, ABGA, dominant in the Southeast, presented individual candidates for federal elections, particularly the presidential elections, and were overwhelmed by the PDP. The same scenario played out in 2007, despite the change in name by the Action Congress to Action Congress of Nigeria. In 2011, three parties, ACN, AMPP, and a new party, the Congress for Progressive Change, whose number one point in its manifesto was the restructuring of Nigeria. Once again, individually, took on the PDP and were beaten as before by the power of incumbency. However, in 2015, following the merger of these major opposition parties to form the All Progressive Congress, the PDP was finally defeated, and today we have an APC-led government in power. What is the wisdom here and the lesson? Fellow Nigerians, this is a prime example of leveraging on relative strength. It's called synergy. As with those small preceding political parties, our 36 states, most of which generate insignificant internal revenue, are not viable enough to overcome our economic challenges and facilitate accelerated economic growth. These 36 days, overwhelmingly sustained by locations from Abuja, cannot guarantee functional infrastructure, such as world-class roads, cannot guarantee railways, airports, housing, and urban development. These 36 days, largely unable to pay workers' salaries, cannot guarantee standard educational and healthcare system or facilitate rural development. These 36 states should in fact become districts headed by mayors within the framework of six geopolitical zones because they will be stronger and more productive within a zonal structure. As zonal structures, they can pool resources to build transportation infrastructure. As zonal structures, they will empower local governments to bring effective governance directly to the people. As zonal structures, they will efficiently coordinate socio-economic policies for the benefit of every Nigerian. Every Nigerian, like Mama Blessing, whose petty trading business will be expanded and transformed by vibrant regional agricultural and transportation policies. Every Nigerian, like Masi Kelechi, whose electronic business can have a globally competitive, made in Nigeria supply from regionally backed industrial clusters. Every Nigeria just selling now Suya, who can build a whole range of businesses around hides and skin, sells from regionally coordinated ranching systems. Every Nigeria, like Bababuki, who will no longer rely on generating sets for power supply due to regional coordination of multimodal resources for efficient power generation transmission and distribution.